For maximum entertainment, enter full screen mode now. Enjoy the show. What? Mom! What's wrong with the TV? I'm trying to watch my favorite show! It's an old TV! Just smack it! What the heck? Mom, it's still not working! It's old! Just hit it again! Just smack it! Sweet! Select your character. Jago selected. Select your mode. Welcome back to the channel, my friends. This is Watch Me Animate episode number 17. My name is Jonathan Abenheim, and this is the finale episode for our cinematic run in Maya. I'm continuing where we left off in part two. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out. This time around, it's all about polishing the animation until it looks awesome. I'm gonna start with the head. Now, it's very easy to mess up your animation if your head ain't right, so to speak. Have you ever paid attention to where your eyes focus on when you're watching a character on screen or you're having a conversation in real life? If you've guessed right, your eyes will generally focus on the head. Now, if you happen to have a cat or a dog or a pet at home, just call their name and watch how they automatically look up to your face. Of course, uh, unless they did something wrong, they probably might be looking at your feet. So with that in mind, I'm gonna refine the head. To make it feel a little more alive, I'm going to add in some bounce. After all, he is running. Now, your eyes may not notice these subtle details, so let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison with a before and after. On the left, the final animation from episode 16, which feels kind of linear and flat. And on the right, a more refined version that feels more alive. All right, moving down to the pelvis area, I'm gonna amplify what is currently there. Jago's running pretty hard, and that intensity should be visible in the pelvis area or around that area, around the legs. We should feel it. So I'm gonna add in more rotation, and I'm also gonna add in some up and down. That will definitely improve the overall look and feel of the run. The next thing I wanna address is the body arc. So. When you're running, you're leaning forward, and when you're running and turning around to look back, your body arc will naturally change. So, I'm gonna adjust the arc, and in doing so, I'll be creating more contrast between these two positions. One position is the forward lean in the run, and the second position is the more upright position as he turns to look back. So, here's a side-by-side -side comparison with a before and after. On the left, no weight, feels kind of flat, right? On the right side, better weight, which feels more alive. I'm going to tighten up the general contacts on the ground and then I'm going to go right up to the shoulders. Now, in real life, depending on the type of run, shoulders won't bounce up and down as much. But this isn't real life. This is animation and knowing how to break the rules is super key. The additional bounce I'm going to add is going to bring his shoulders to life. And when you know how to break the rules, the viewer will feel like what he or she sees on screen is correct. Here's a comparison, both shots side by side. You be the judge, which one of these has more appeal, the left or the right? Onto the chest, we're going to add in more texture. Now, Texture is an industry term used to describe the need for more detail. So based on our new body arc adjustments, I want the chest to follow along. What does this mean? It means two things. The first is that the chest will dip forward while he's running, and when he turns to look back, it's gonna lift up. This is, of course, based on the new body arc timing from the run. The second thing it means is that I need a coffee break. <laughs> it is that time, my friends, where in coffee talk mode, it is actually, I'm having a little fun with this. Um, so, today's coffee talk topic is a term that is widely used in many industries. Now, you can be in film, game, television, mobile, and you're probably, there's a good chance that you've heard a variation of this word, and that word is polish pass or polishing. So, you know, you're making your animation look perfect. So, depending on the industry you're in, you might hear polishing. Some like to use finaling, and I personally like to use the version that my friend likes to say when we're working on stuff together. He has this thing where he looks at me, he's like, John, just make it look good. 
So whether you're polishing, finaling, or you're making it look good, just know that it all means the same thing and you don't really have to get caught up with the term or get confused about which one means what. It all means the same thing. And uh, one other thing, stick around till the end of this episode. I'm going to be answering a random question from you, the viewers. Uh, so stick around to the end, have a little fun, I'll see you guys in a bit, and uh, on that note, enjoy the coffee. It is camera time. So the idea for the camera is simple. I'm going to key in some cool camera shakes to give this shot a more cinematic action feeling vibe. I'm pretty sure that's a word if you Google it. Now, something to keep in mind is that you can easily ruin a good shot by overdoing it with excessive camera shaking. Now, it does look super badass when it's done well, but keep in mind that the viewer who may not have any animation background whatsoever will feel like something is off when it's done incorrectly. Think of it like adding your favorite hot sauce to your chicken wings. You add too much and it will completely destroy the taste of the wings. Polish pass number six. I'm gonna continue with some more adjustments on the camera. I will tighten up the head and then I will move up to the shoulders for more adjustments and more tweaks. Remember, this is the nature of a polish pass. Uh, a lot of these small changes will seem invisible to the regular viewer and that's normal, but keep in mind that an experienced animator is always looking through the lens of a microscope when making these types of changes. All right, it is time to refine the arms. Now for time-saving purpose, I'm only gonna show you the left arm, but understand that the process is identical for the right arm. So I'm gonna really dial in the animation for both the mechanical and visual aspects of the left arm. And by that, I mean mechanically, the left arm motion has to be believable and visually, it has to appeal to the camera framing. So I'm gonna tighten up what's currently there. Next up is the calm. Now in my previous polish pass number two, I adjusted the body arc for the forward lean as he's running and a more upright position as he turns to look back. This time around, I'm gonna adjust the left and right tilt. This is gonna create more depth and contrast as he's running forward and he's turning around to look back. Now, I'm adjusting in real time to the camera to see what feels the best visually and what appeals to me the most. Next up, more adjustments will be made on the legs. Everything in the body is connected, so I made changes on the comm, therefore I need to revise the legs to ensure that the motion is good, the contact are clean and more importantly that the knees aren't popping. All right, into the final pass we go and I'm gonna break up the symmetry on the pelvis by just randomly pushing and pulling certain keys via my F curve editor and adjust in real time as I play back the animation over and over. Now, what I'm doing by breaking up the symmetry in the pelvis is the same way an artist may dirty up his or her artwork intentionally to avoid having that, you know, perfectly clean look. You wanna avoid that. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do is add in more subtle breakdowns to the head. These small details really add up and help help sell the shot and make Jago's head motion even more believable. All right, time to finalize the hands and it's no secret that Jago has a very simple hand setup, which is intentional by design in case you were wondering. So the idea for the hands as he runs forward, we'll have his hands opened up. And when he looks back and he turns around, I'll close his hand into a fist. This is what felt natural to me when I was acting out the motion. Now, another thing worth pointing out is that if you haven't noticed yet, I'm always working on one body part at a time. Animation is complicated enough as it is. And personally speaking, my brain processes things uh, much better when I do one thing at a time. In this case, I started with his right hand, I polished it, and then I moved on to his left hand and I simply repeated the same process. We interrupt this broadcast to remind you to follow Watch Me Animate on the socials. Got the latest and greatest updates on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, ArtStation. <sighs> 
I gotta get on the socials. Please remember that John Hay not posts as frequently as you like because he's busy creating epic shows for your viewing pleasure. He also enjoys working out to keep his left mouse clicking skills on point and sharp. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel because it's epic and I told you so. Back to the live broadcast with Watch Me Animate. Finally, it is time to animate the accessories, and although some people like to use scripts, modifiers, or effects, or whatever they like to use, I just animate it manually, straight ahead, in real time. I don't depend on anything except my mouse, and my keyboard, and my knowledge for body mechanics and physics, and what I think things should look like when they're moving fast. So, the good old formula for straight ahead animation is to simply press play, watch the animation loop thousands of times, and add in keyframes in real time. Uh, if my keys look good, I move on. If not, I readjust and I repeat that process. Now, you'll notice that the belt is going through the legs and at certain points in the run. And I'm not going to lie, this was just me being lazy and not wanting to spend more hours getting the belt to react off his legs wherever there was contact. That said, if you want me to create an episode where I show you how to make the belt look flawless, as if there were some type of physics engine running in the background, comment below. Let me know. Another thing worth remembering is that sometimes animation doesn't have to be perfect in order to sell the shot, which is exactly why I opted to leave the belt as you see it in the final animation. So this is how you create a cinematic run in Maya. Now it is time for, you guessed it, a WMA recap. All right, so the first thing I did was to make Jago's head come to life. I added more bounce to help sell the intensity of his run. Remember, the head is the main focal point for the viewer, so it has to feel right. Next up, I polished the pelvis. I made it feel more intense. He is running fast after all. I adjusted the body arc, a forward lean while he runs, and a more upright position as he turns to look back. Next were the legs. I tightened up the contacts and the general motion, then back up to the shoulders. I added more bounce to help sell the intensity of the run. Again, this isn't real life, it's animation, and knowing how to break the rules is super key. Next was the chest. Since I made the body arc adjustments in a previous pass, I'll make sure that the chest follows along with the new body arc timing, which will result in a more believable upper body weight. Next up was the camera. I added more camera shake to accentuate the action of the run. Remember, the camera can make or break your shot, so be mindful with how much camera shaking you add. Next, I made some adjustments on the camera, then tightened up the head and added in more weight in the shoulders by adding more rotation. Next up were the arms, body tilt, and legs. Remember, maximum appeal and believability are the main focus when I'm making these small incremental changes. Next, the pelvis and the head. For the pelvis, I wanted to break up the symmetry while still maintaining believable motion. For the head, I added in some more subtle breakdowns to further enhance what was already there. Next were the hands. As he runs forward, I left his hands open, and when he turns to look back to see if any enemies are around, I closed his hands. Again, this is what felt natural to me when I was acting the shot. Last but not least, Jago's accessories come to life via straight ahead animation. And that, my friends, is how you animate a cinematic run in Maya. I hope you enjoyed this series and more importantly, learned something from my workflow and process. Oh, this guy just made boxes come to life. This guy's amazing. Mom, eat your supper. It's ready. Hold on, mom. It's not over yet. The full process video for this episode and more is available on my Gumroad page. The link is in the description below. I want to give a very big super shout out to all my patrons for supporting my work. You guys are truly amazing. Some of you have been with me from day one. God bless you. I appreciate the support. You know, these episodes do take a lot of time to create and produce, and I still am a solo artist on this journey. So your support really does mean a lot to me. If you want to show some love for the channel, you can head on over to my patreon.com slash watch me anime, or you can simply buy me a coffee, leave a little tip, you know, just to say, hey, thanks, John. Appreciate the content and entertainment continued the good work all right time to answer a random question from you the fans cue the intro congratulations for sticking around because it is time for watch me animate's random q a all right today's random question comes from lacrimosa industry i hope i'm pronouncing it right i apologize if i'm not 
<laughs> Alright, the question. Hi John, huge fan. Quick question. Can I still be a decent animator if all I drink is tea? <laughs> Merci. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, that might explain the amazing animation coming from uh, European artists, especially those who graduated from Gobelin. Apparently, they only drink tea at that school, which is probably why the animation is so good. So, um, uh, yeah. Mom, I don't want hot chocolate anymore. I want tea. I think it might be time to switch over to tea. <laughs> Thanks for the question, like Rimosa Industry. And thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you drop a comment. Who knows, I might pick your name next for the random q and Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit the like. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on the bell notification and share this video. Sharing is caring, and it is one of the best ways to show your support for the channel. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you all on the next episode.